Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Repeating Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Once again Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Okay, let's take a look at uh, the meanings behind it. So as we started, as you can see, the first we said Bismillahir Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah, right? So we started in the name of Allah. Then we praised Allah using three uh, different ways. One was that all praises belong to Allah. Then He is the most merciful. Then reminding us and proclaiming that He is the Master of the Day of Judgment. Okay. So as we do these three prayers, you know, we know that's from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, that Allah responds to us saying in a summarized way that you know my servant praised me. Okay, now the next thing we do is we mention who we are. We mention our identity, our status, and our you know, approach, our worldview, if you will. So what we are saying is that, look, oh Allah, you are the only one that we worship. And I'll talk about what worship means. And you are the one that we really, really, and truly um, uh, exclusively seek help from. So these are the two things that we do, and our identity, our status, if you will. And this is what we are mentioning and emphasizing. So as we do that, it's also important to remind us of this status and this mindset that we have. So when it comes to worship, um, this is about submission, obedience, right? So who do we obey? So people either obey their own desires. Okay, I'm doing something because I want to do it. Or their culture, or their friends, or a group that they want to belong to, or seeking the pleasure of someone else. Okay, that's why they're acting in a certain manner. Okay, but a Muslim uh, has an identity, a commitment, and makes an attempt that, look, in my life, I'm going to live within the boundaries of Allah. So if Allah wants me to do something, even if I don't feel like it, I'll get up. This is what's going to dictate what time I get up, not my work and so on and so forth. If I, if I have to get up earlier than work for prayer, I will get up. Okay, it's not my school that's primarily dictating when I wake up and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, if Allah wants me to do something, I would do it. If Allah does not want me to do something, I would not do it. Because I realize that, look, I, this body, this ability that Allah has given me, it belongs to Allah. And I have to use it in a way that is pleasing to Allah. And now within that parameters of Islam, within the parameters of guidance from Allah, I have a lot of flexibility on how I spend my time, what kind of work I do, what kind of studies I do, and you know, so many different things, the, the clothing, uh, as long as within the you know, standard, within the boundaries of Islam, I have a lot of way to uh, express my own individuality, my own preferences, and so on and so forth. But this would all be within the bounds of Allah. And I seek help from Allah in all matters. Okay, whether it be me, you know, finding it hard to worship, I seek Allah's help. So if I'm feeling lazy, the first thing, the easiest thing I can do is ask Allah, oh Allah, give me the strength to do the right thing, to, to leave the sin, to leave the bad habit, to do the right thing, to stand up and pray and so on and so forth. And any worldly matters, relationship, job, work, business, finances, you know, help, I always seek help from Allah because I realize that if Allah were not to help me, nobody else can. Now we can take help from, you know, people who are able to help, right? You know, somebody, hey, can you pass me the water bottle? Can you help me with this fundraising? Can you help me with this project? Sure, that's collaboration and interdependence, interdependence and partnerships. That's not a problem. But we need to realize that if Allah does not want something to happen, it will never happen. And that is a very important realization so that we do not do things uh, which are outside the bound of bound of Islam, trying to seek something which we would not get if Allah does not want anyways. Okay, uh, same thing goes for uh, like people who are dead, you know, even if they're messengers, uh, righteous people, if they're dead, they are dead. Okay, we don't ask them for help. We don't ask them to facilitate things. We directly ask Allah uh, for that help. Now, let's take a look at transliteration of this. And again, you have two A's to, to note that, you know, double sound. And this two Y's is to show you that, look, it's, it's not Iya. If it was one Y, it would be Iya, but it's double, right? So Iya. Okay, Ka. Now. So this apostrophe, remember, middle of the throat? Now. So without this apostrophe, it would be Na. So now it's Now. Budu. Wa. Iya, again. Ka. Nas. Nas ta ain apostrophe, right? Ain iya kana abudu wa iya kana sta ain. 